Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios, and welcome back to Cinderblock Studios Live, episode 007. Today's topic, art and how to take it seriously. There seems to be a lot of talk, uh, especially among hobbyists and younger artists, like, okay, I'm going to start taking art seriously now, or maybe you get into your 20s, okay, now I'm going to take start, start taking art seriously. Sometimes maybe you won't even get to that point until you retire, and like, okay, now I'm going to take my art seriously, now that I have some time. Well, what exactly does that mean, to take your art seriously? Well, that, that and more we're going to be talking about today. For the time being, I'm flying solo, but who knows? Whoa, crap. <laughs> Excuse me. And here I am, screwing up the own my own feed, <laughs> because I have forgotten to mute the video on the other page, and now I'm getting feedback. So yay for that. Uh, just give me one second. I do want to do a l couple of things, make sure that we are indeed streaming. <laughs> Started out so strong and confident, and now I've got nothing. Uh, so... <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, from what I can see, the stream is not showing up for you guys over on YouTube, but for some reason it is showing up for me. So, as I fix this, I will have a look at some other things. Ah, uh, fantastic. So, for those of you that don't know me, or are new and trying to figure this out over on the channel, uh, my name is Ben Yockel, I'm a visual artist living and working in Pittsburgh, PA, and I am doing YouTube videos and making art. So yeah, that's me. I'm at a, we well, can't really see it now, but I am an acrylic painter, uh, visual uh, landscapes and things like that, and I am working on those technical difficulties as we speak. All right, just want to give it maybe about 30 seconds. Might be back. Not sure what's happening exactly. Give that a few minutes. And I guess we'll begin. Just one second. Oh, see, now I lost it. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Just give me a few minutes. Yep, I'm definitely not getting any video feed whatsoever. So, that's fantastic. Okay, going to lose the feed for just a minute here, but uh, I'll be right back. So, <laughs> see, this sucks. I have to wait for the lag to go through on the channel. It's like a 30 second to a minute lag now. Uh, let's see. 
Aha, okay, it does look like we are indeed back. So hopefully now you should, guys should be able to see what I'm working on and what I'm uh, doing as of now. So let me head back over and double check all my other fun stuff. And if there's any other problems, feel free to let me know in the comments. So coming back around to there. Okay, so back to the intro, more or less. This is End of Last Year's Life, Episode 7. Art and how to take it seriously. So what does that mean, exactly? How do you take art seriously? How do you make that step to, okay, I'm going to start doing this more often, or I'm going to you know, I'm going to sketch every day, or I'm going to paint every day, or do a daily something or other, or, or I want to get so much better at landscapes, or anatomy, or you know, whatever. How do you even how do you even begin to do that? That seems like a daunting, unbelievable task that would be impossible for just about anyone. So, one thing that I do want to bring up today is that uh, you kind of have to know what you like. <laughs> now, I didn't uh, really know how to put this for a long time. I did a recent uh, live show and uh, interview with fellow uh, YouTube artist Sekar Yasin, and when he talked about uh, style, uh, we talked a little bit about you know knowing what you like and doing what you like, um, which seems strange. Like, well, I know what I like. Well, maybe you don't. Maybe you haven't really analyzed the things that you like. Maybe you don't... Uh, remember some of the things that inspired you when you were younger. So there's a little bit of perhaps uh, individual soul searching involved in that. However, you know, it's a little bit of this, it's a little bit of that. So you're like, okay, so how do I do that? What are my, what are my interests? What am I passionate about? Uh, for me, I mean, I love nature. I love landscapes. I love building worlds. So that's something for me that I find, okay, this is something I really, really like to do. I was answering a, a forum question over on DA uh, yesterday, this morning, something like that, and I came across somebody who was like, "Well, how do you, you know, how do you do that? What do you like? Like, what is what, what was the the point in which you kind of started really taking things seriously?" It's like, well, there's a little bit involved in that. I mean, it's a little bit of um, I've completely lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Yep, it's gone. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it's gone. <laughs> uh, but it's it's the idea of oh uh, that's what it was. It was how to how do you choose a medium? How do you choose a, a subject matter? There's so many possibilities. You know, a lot of people that are interested in concept art or maybe three D modeling or you know, whatever you happen to be to be interested in. And so like, well, how do I how do I just pick one? Was like, well, just shut up and pick one, you know, and if you don't like it enough, you can try something else, but uh, a lot of times you're getting in your own way more than you think you are. <laughs> Sounds a little confusing, but it's really not. So figure out what it is you like. What do you, what do you want to create? What are your, what are your interests? So if, like for me, it was trees for a long time. I'm doing these sort of monolithic rock structures now. It always kind of change and, and it changes and evolves a little bit over time and with how you work. Uh, so you're not usually going to be just focusing on the same thing all the time. But that also shouldn't, you know, hold you back from trying new things and playing with uh, new ideas in the same sense. And so when you start thinking about what you like, maybe like, okay, well, I like this person's art. Well, why do you like that person's art? Well, they use really cool colors. Oh, I must like really cool colors, and I'm really just completely ripping Sykrov at this point. But that's a lot of of what he had to say there, and it was a lot of, oh, I like this. Maybe I can try and do this in my own work. So I'm going to finish laying out my colors here before we move on to the next topic. Uh, probably going to be a relatively short uh, live show today. I don't have a whole lot to talk about here. But I do have uh, this painting to work on finishing. So if we get to the end here, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw those in the comments, uh, either on Google Plus or on YouTube, and I will get to them whenever I end up looking. Uh, if you've seen my shows before, you know that's not always right away, but I do try and uh, answer uh, your questions as they come in. So what color was I getting? 
I don't remember. I need a little white and a little yellow, I believe. Alrighty. So, next up, okay, you think, alright, I know what I like. I know the kind of stuff I like to do. Maybe you're someone who loves nature, like I do. Maybe you're someone who loves sort of comic books. You're going to do comic books, manga style, anime. Maybe you're someone who loves just old-fashioned portraits. So I like those. I'm going to focus on those. Great. So, there are artists, and I've met many of them here through the YouTube art community, who are very, very good, but don't have the drive. They don't have the the motivation to, to really kind of take their work further and to take it to the next level. And while I can kind of suggest a couple of things, I cannot tell you everything uh, because you have to find some motivation for yourself. You cannot, I, I can't do that for you. Um, I know for me, motivation is a tough thing. Uh, a lot of times I have a hard time getting going on a painting or um, something like that, but once I'm getting, once I'm there, once I'm going, then I'm like set and I, I don't stop. And it's really hard for me to stop when I do. So I'm like, oh, I gotta stop, my layer, gotta let my layers dry or do something. So how do you, like, what's that drive for you? You know, so, okay, you want to think, what is the true force behind why I made art, why I do this, why I do that? Um, do you just want to get better? Like, is getting better your goal? Because, one, getting better isn't a goal. <laughs> it's a weak goal. Um, getting better is sort of a vague understanding. You know, so it's, it's not a, there's no end. You just, oh, I'm getting better. Well, so you're always going to get better. Um, for me, my art is a lot about understanding the world. Uh, when I look at an object, I'm trying to figure out the color and the way it hits and how I could replicate that in a painting. Or are you someone who sort of wants, sort of, more or less wants the attention? And if you want the attention, great. You're probably going to get it over time anyway. But then your your work sort of would need a driving goal. Um, do you want to create something that makes people, that's emotionally gripping? Like, oh, this this made me feel really sad, or this made me feel really angry for some reason, or or, or this I don't know, this this just touched me in some way. Or do you want to create something that resonates with somebody in a little bit of a different way? For my work, that's a lot of thinking, oh, I kind of feel like I'm right there. And I, you're really taking you to another world. And that's a lot of what I try and do in my own work, is try and take people out of their element and into these new worlds and see uh, what you can do with those worlds and, and what you can do to kind of I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, really. Um, it's a matter of sort of jumping in there. And like, oh, how, how would this... For, for me, it's a lot of making myself happy, and if other people like it, great. But uh, if, if there are enough other people like me, they're going to start seeing what I see. Oh, this is a really cool thing. It was in, kind of see have this little bit of influence here and there. and It's a little bit of community building, and it's a little bit of uh, sharing ideas on a visual level versus using language or using... Uh, so you think like music uses sort of a, a language and a, and a rhythm uh, to convey ideas and art is just uh, doing the same thing only with images. So I need to mix up a good color for my rocks and I need to do some sort of a pink here. I was using some ochre and this green gold crap purplish colors. It's sort of a... I think I was going for sort of like a rusty brownish color. So... So yeah, set yourself some ideas and set yourself some, some achievable goals as well, you know. Don't just think, oh, I'm gonna improve. Well, improvement isn't really a goal. It's sort of just a thing you're gonna do anyway. So it's like, hey, I want to fill up a sketchbook in six months, or a year, or less than that, maybe a month. You know, whatever goal you happen to set uh, towards yourself, and then find a way to motivate yourself for that goal. Uh, for me, over my second channel, I had uh, Sketch Every Day, uh, where I did a daily sketch every day for 90 days, and, and I had to put up a video. 
So that gave me the drive to do it. Oh, I have to put up a vis video because it's part of the project. So it gave me a reason to keep going, even though after about two weeks, I did not want to do it anymore. It was pretty terrible. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was about two or three weeks in. Yeah, I was like, why did I do this? This was a mistake. But I kept going at it because that was the goal that I set myself for. And it worked. You know, I ended up uh, doing the 90 days. And there was a week when I went on vacation and took off, but uh, it didn't didn't mean that I wasn't sketching. So you know, if you're gonna do a daily sketch project, you know, that's that's your goal. Get X amount of sketches done every day, or maybe one a day for X amount of days. Uh, just some sort of small achievable goal. And then once you focus on your small goals, you can start focusing on larger goals more. So maybe you want to make a comic book, or you want to make, start a web comic, or you want to, I don't know, have a show at a gallery, whatever. Um, give yourself a goal that is attainable. And if you have a goal that's more attainable than, say, an abstract idea, like I'm going to get better, or I'm going to do uh, whatever, you know, <laughs> You know, you have to kind of recognize the idea between an abstract goal and a solid, actual one that is doable, physically doable, and something you can do. Um, not something, oh, it's a long-term project. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not, you know, because then it, you won't get any better. It's the concept of a uh, like a <coughs> New Year's resolution. People say, oh, I'm going to lose weight. Well, how much? <laughs> I mean, really, um, you just don't have that set goal for yourself and you don't really know where to take it. So, still working on a good shadow color here. Get a little more blue. Red. That's not bad. So I know that's not what I used here though. That's what I'm trying to... I, don't think, I didn't think I used black either, but I'm going to have to. Anyhow, so, set yourself some long and short short term goals, things that are attainable, things you can actually do. And then there's a question that I think you kind of need to ask yourself if you're, especially if you're creating your art for an audience. It's wh why do you want to make art simple, easy? At least it should be anyway. I mean, if you don't know why you're, you're drawing, other than I'm expressing myself, which I hate as a as an answer. If somebody just says, I'm expressing myself with art, then they don't know. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's not that their work is going to be bad. It's not that they're, they're doing something wrong exactly. It's that there isn't a whole lot of drive behind what they're doing. They're just doodling. They're just sketching. Someone who's like that is more of a hobbyist. They're not taking their work seriously. So if you're someone who just sort of does art to express themselves. Perhaps you need to think a little bit further if you want to expand on your work and, and uh, start really getting better. Why do you really make art? <laughs> and that can be a tough question. It sounds it sounds easy. It seems easy. But it, it can be a really tough question to, to ask yourself and to, to really think about the meaning. Uh, sort of selfishly, uh, I talked about, about, about the, a little bit about this earlier, is that in a lot of ways, I make art for myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do. I <laughs> it sounds terrible. I don't like saying it that way, but you know, if that's what drives you, I mean, if, to me, art is about a pursuit of knowledge. It's a pursuit of understanding and, and, and sort of understanding the world, and I mentioned that earlier. And so if you're trying to understand something, you're not doing it for someone else. You're doing it for yourself. However, you can't always hold that in. You know, once you complete a piece, show it to people. You know, show people what you've done. You know, get their feedback on it. What did you do right? What did you do wrong? Uh, what can you do better, even? Uh, and granted, you don't have to listen to everybody's opinion because they're not always going to be right. Uh, may not necessarily what you may not necessarily be what you need to hear either. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't listen and that you shouldn't ask for help. So in sort of along those lines, you know, why do you make art? So I make art because I want to make art, and that's what I do. Okay. And then comes the, the, the harder question, which can sound harsh and mean. 
why should anybody care? And that sounds terrible. And I wish it sounded better than that. But really ask yourself that. You know, a lot of artists are like, why isn't anybody looking at my work? It's like, why would anybody look at your work? And, you know, I don't say that to be mean, but you need to ask yourself that. I mean, when, when the question uh, came up on the DA forums a couple months ago, and I think it was really funny. It was, uh, would you uh, watch yourself or would you follow yourself as an artist? Most people said no. <laughs> and I think the reason is, is, as artists, we don't necessarily make the things that we are inspired by. <laughs> we make the things, we, we try to, we, we try and like, oh, I'll make something like that, but I'm going to change it a little bit to the way I like it. But most of us don't really like our work. <laughs> so if you, if you don't like your work, it's not so much that other people won't like your work just because you hate it. But there's a sort of a love-hate relationship, you know. Can you find value in your own work without just saying, this is crap, this is crap, this is crap. If you don't have any confidence in yourself, nobody else will have confidence in you. And that does, doesn't just go for art. That goes for a number of disciplines and jobs and real-world stuff. But, you know, all the same, you know, if you can't uh, find a way to come across as an interesting person or an interesting artist or really trying to create something interesting, people aren't going to listen to you. They're not going to care. They're not going to want to look at your art because they're like, oh, this person's just doodling and whatever. You know, like, Think about the artists that, you, that inspire you and the artists that you want to follow and, and uh, sort of be interested in their art. You're not interested in their art just because it looks nice. You might be interested in Hey, this artist is cool. What's it like for him on a daily basis? You know, how, how often does he sketch? How often does he, uh, he, or he or she? I should, you know, I shouldn't be restrictive like that. But um, really, I mean, if, you know, if you think about what makes the artist that you like interesting, you can think about, okay, what are they doing that that maybe I could do, or maybe I'm not doing something that they're doing, and that's why people aren't liking my stuff. You can have the best art in the world, but if you're not promoting yourself somewhere, if you're not sharing your story, if you're not telling people about your work, no one's going to care. And again, you know, hobbyists, people doing it on their own, you may not want your people. You may not want people to look at your art, and that's fine. But if you're looking to get better, if you're looking to really take those steps, you're going to need a community. You're going to need a circle of trust and people that can critique your art. And whatever they say, they, they're not trying to hurt your feelings, but they're doing it to help you out. Uh, there's a, a great quote. I can't quite remember who said it first, but it was something along the lines of, a criticism of your art is not a criticism of you as a person. So if somebody looks at a piece that you've done and say, ooh, I don't like that, they don't, they're not saying, ooh, I don't like you. <laughs> they're saying, maybe, some, maybe you did something wrong, maybe... Something isn't just—it's not connecting to them visually, and granted, you can't please everybody. But you're going to run into little problems like that along the way. And the question is: is can you discern between this was the, like there's some some information in this chunk that I can use towards my next piece, or can you take, or do you just take it like, oh, they just hate my work? It's like no. Can you find advice here? Is the advice viable? You know, a good way to think about um, if you receive a critique and they tell you to do something, um, you have to look at your work non-objectively, or, or maybe it's objectively, I don't know <laughs> the exact term. But when I finish a piece, granted I finished it, I'm fairly proud of it usually, but I'm not super attached to it. And this is a big part of it as well. If you're so attached to your work that you can't see the flaws in it, then you've got a problem. And that goes along to the same thing, is why should anybody care? So if you're so passionate about your work, and if, if you're so like, this piece is amazing, and be, more people should like my stuff because my stuff is amazing, you're, you're blinded by your own work. You know. So if you see someone critiquing your work, take it back to the basic elements of design, line, shape, value, texture, color, uh, space. Is there another one? I don't know. <laughs> I did a video series on them. I don't even know. But 
you're going to find these things. So you look back on these things, like, okay, does anything they're saying relate back to the elements of design? It's like, oh, this person said something about it's too dark. Okay, well, that's a that's a contrast issue. That's a value issue. Maybe I can take that into consideration. You know. So yeah, it's about that community. It's about uh, the community and the circle of trust. And so again, why do you make art? Why should people care? And if you can't answer those questions yourself, start at, start with those questions. Why do you make art? Why should people care? And not it's not a bad thing. It's not a, a bad thing to ask yourself that. And it's not a bad thing to, to say, I don't even know why people should be liking my stuff. You know? And maybe you can't answer those for yourself. Maybe somebody else can. Uh, I know it's a little confusing for me. I don't really understand so much the appeal of my videos and my channel as much. Maybe because I'm the one doing them and I know how, how much of a pain in the ass I am. But, um, you know, because you, you know your flaws, you know the stuff that's wrong with you. So it's it's sort of about finding this middle ground. You know, can I can I find a middle ground that covers the ideas of I'm good or I'm decent or I'm okay, whatever. I'm a beginner. I'm an intermediate. I'm advanced, but I got problems. Whatever. I'm at X level, and you recognize what you can do. But you also recognize what you can't do. And if you can do that, you've already taken the first steps on improving and taking your art more seriously. Now, you, can't, you cannot be so in love with your work that you miss something that's obvious. Oh, I always... Um, there's this idea of, oh, what, what piece is your favorite? Uh, usually it's whatever piece I just finished. I have a few in my collection that I kind of are sort of my own little private uh, art worst ones that I've kind of liked over the years, but usually the one I can't, the one I just finished, I can't see as many flaws in. And then as soon as I start working on the next project, I start seeing the flaws. Because I'm like, oh, I didn't do enough with the contrast here. I missed a shadow. I did X, 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 X. So it's about finding that balance, find that middle ground. And I think at this point I'm rambling and repeating myself. So I'm going to try and go on to the next topic. Before I do that, I'm going to get some shadows from these rocks and see check up on you guys over on the, the comments page. So, get a little shadow using some this blue and black and a little red for this shadow. I'm going to blur out the edges. Uh, it's supposed to be more, more like sand, so I want to get the idea that the sand is kind of up and around the rocks rather than just on top of them. That's a start anyway. Okay. So I'll head over here to the Q&A section as well as the comments over on YouTube and see what you guys are up to. I haven't done a live show in forever. I actually feel a little rusty at this. <laughs> uh, crappy network. <laughs> oh, well, it's going to be a couple minutes before I can do anything with that. But, uh, oh, what the heck, seriously? <laughs> I kept my... Headphone wire wrapped around a stool. <laughs> ah, there we are. Excellent. So, where are we at now? <laughs> uh, we got some things happening. here and there, and all kind of crazy stuff. Yep, and it looks fairly calm, I guess. <laughs> fairly fairly quiet over in the chat room there. But that's quite all right. So anyhow, 
back to the painting. I also have to remember I'm working on a painting process video for this piece for Friday. And once I finish this, there'll be the video Friday, and I'll also have prints available of this painting. Once Again, once I finish it, those will be available on Friday as well. So, talking a lot about, um, if you're just joining us, we're talking about art and how to take it seriously. We've kind of talked a little bit about uh, knowing your passions and figuring out your drive and what really you know, pushes you to work and to paint or to draw or whatever it is that you happen to do. <clears throat> now, though, I'd like to talk a little bit about actual things that you can do. <coughs> it's like, okay, good. How can I take my art seriously, Ben? How do I do that? I can start by remembering to take more drinks of water. <laughs> so, from what I've found uh, over the, I don't want to say over the years, but kind of that's what it is over the years, um, is that it's important to have some kind of drawing or painting routine. You need to work on something of a schedule if you can. Uh, for some people that's, okay, I'm going to paint every Friday. Or I'm going to do a little bit of work after school on uh, I don't know, Thursday and Friday, or Tuesday and Thursday, or whatever. You know, whatever you can work into your schedule. Uh, you have to find time to actually work. Whether you have anything to work on or not. Maybe you're just going to sit doodle, fine. But if you don't spend regular time, and I suggest every day, but if you cannot work in it every day, that's fine. Uh, but as much as possible, if you want to take art seriously, and especially if you want to do it as a job, you have to try and do it every day. Whether you're doing something in your sketchbook, whether you're doing a little painting or a study or whatever, something every day would be fantastic. Uh, if you don't know where to start, I actually would suggest over on my second channel, uh, Sketch Every Day. I, you can just follow the 90 day, 90 day sketch challenge along. Just start at day one, and the next day you do day two, and you just do a drawing based on the prompt that I do there. Uh, every day for 90 days, and I think that's a really that's a great way to start. Uh, get, get, some, get some ideas flowing. Uh, it's like, what do you think of? I'll give you. I think one of the early prompts is called "Finding the Flag." What does that mean to you? Is it uh, capture the flag? Is it uh, two people in a desert looking for a flag? Who knows? Uh, you know, that's sort of up to you to kind of play with your imagination, or you can just do a. Um, version of the sketch that I did for that day because I link all my sources uh, if there is a source um, in that day's uh, video. And uh, part of this is keeping a sketchbook. Um, I cannot stress enough. <laughs> I've talked about this on the channel before, off and on, um, but I cannot stress enough how important it is to actually keep a sketchbook and work in a sketchbook regularly because you don't know. Sometimes you forget what you did yesterday. Or it's like, you can come back to some old ideas maybe. It's, oh, I did that. I did that on Tuesday, so maybe uh, they can take some ideas from this on Tuesday and play with them, mix them into this idea, something like that. Uh, or it's a, actually a really great way, I don't want to say or, because it is additionally, a great way to track your own growth um, as an artist. Because perhaps you're going through and saying, okay, I don't even know if I've been improving. Well, go back six months or a year or however long you've been keeping a sketchbook. I've got, I'm on my 10th sketchbook since 2008. So it's been, <laughs> I've had quite a long time to to go through them. I'm actually my fourth, I, 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 I say the 10th sketchbook to, since 2008. I say that like it's supposed to be impressive. I'll say it this way. I'm on my fourth sketchbook this year. <laughs> That's a little more impressive. Um, but still, I, you know, if you're not working constantly, if you're not constantly either observing or whether you're doing studies or quick concept thumbnails like I do, you know, you have to f force yourself into working on something if you do really want to get better. And sometimes, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. But if you're serious about it, if you want to get serious about it, you kind of need to work on something, even if you don't feel like working on something. I had, uh, I heard someone say once that 
the best time to do art is when you don't feel like doing art. <laughs> Sounds a little strange, but uh, really it's true. Um, if you want to do it professionally, you know, especially if you're going to be working for a company, you're not always going to feel inspired, but you're still going to have to get the job done. You know, maybe you're not going to, maybe you're not going to be an artist professionally, but you do want to take your work seriously. Well, think like a professional. Uh, think like a uh, Think like a professional. If you if you want to get good, force yourself to do it. It's not always. It's art should be fun. I want to say it's not always going to be fun. It should be fun. It is. You know, if it's something you really enjoy, something you really like to do, then you know, do it. Don't don't make excuses. Don't put obstacles in your way. And that actually leads us right into my final topic for today. <coughs> Simply put. What's holding you back? I'm going to venture to guess that the biggest thing holding you back is yourself. That sounds kind of strange, but uh, it's true. I mean, if you think, okay, I'm not holding me back. I can do this whenever I want. Maybe that's the problem right there, whenever you want. Well, maybe you don't want to do it right now. So you're holding yourself back. You're saying, oh, I'll just do it later. <laughs> Procrastination. Something I know a lot of, a lot about from my from my days in, in high school and college. Uh, but uh, I I was perfectly fine not doing the work right now. <laughs> but the problem with putting it off is the longer you put it off, the harder it is to get started. So you keep putting it off and putting it off, and putting it off. They're like I don't know how to start in this piece. Well, you kept putting it off. Stop it. <laughs> don't be an idiot. You know. There's a granted. There's a certain level of uh, maturity that comes with it, with you know this kind of thought process. But you know, if you're gonna keep putting off your work, you're not going to get better. You know, he's like, oh, I just, I just don't want to do it. And, uh, and I know quite a bit about this because I don't do anatomy. I don't do people. I don't do animals. I don't touch living things in a lot of ways. Living. Organisms, I mean plants, sure, but and I the thing is I have no interest in doing that, but I'm terrible at it. And because I'm terrible at it, I don't get any better, and I'm afraid to get better. I'm afraid to to try because I know how terrible I am. At some point I will. At some point I will go and I'll work on something and I will get better, <laughs> but I'm just not. I'm just not doing that. But it kind of goes back to that first part. It doesn't interest me. It's not something I'm passionate about. So it's not something that I'm going to drive and, and push to get better. But landscapes I've always loved. So I always had a push. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try this with the clouds this time. And, ooh, I should try this technique. And eh, this, this, that, that. You know? And uh, so it's like, it's about knowing your passions, but it's also about kind of getting over yourself a little bit. And I've started to do that. I'm working little figures and little scribbly guys into my paintings. There's going to be one right about here in this painting, but um, it's like, how do you, how do you do that exactly? Well, get over yourself. Quit making excuses. Your excuses for why you're not doing something are not reasons why you're not doing something. So what do I mean? Like, um, I'm not doing this because I'm afraid, or that's my thing for people a lot is I'm afraid. I'm afraid to do people because I'm terrible at it. Well, of course you're going to be terrible at it. You kind of have to expect failure a little bit as an artist. You know, you're not going to be, you're not going to go in, you're not going to do 50 amazing drawings. You're probably going to do 50 terrible drawings and maybe one of them is going to be good. But that one good one, you can take, okay, this is pretty good. I'm going to do better than this one good one. But I'm also going to use all of these 49 failures as reasons to get better. So that can, maybe that's your drive. Maybe your drive can be something like, I'm going to get better because all I'm doing right now is ter terrible, terrible work. Um, good story on this one is, uh, in high school I took this class called AP Art. Uh, AP is Advanced Placement. And uh, with the uh, AP classes, uh, there was art, there's like history and science and things. And at the end of the class, you uh, take some sort of a test and submit it to the college board who does the SATs. Um, and so 
you get your score back, and if your score is high enough, you essentially get college credit in high school for a class. It's pretty cool. So my goal in high school, when I was younger, leading up to my senior year, is I want to be in this class my senior year. I don't care what it takes, I'm going to do it. And I got in. It was really great. Again, go through the class. Did some interesting work. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. And then took it wasn't so much a test as we worked on a portfolio all, all year. Turned it in. And so school let out. I think about a month passed and I got my results back. It's a score between 1 and 5, and you have to get a 4 or 5 to get the actual credit uh, for the for the, the college credit for the class. I got a 1, and I was furious. <laughs> I was furious and cursing up a wall for like two weeks. I was like, how could they do this? My work was great. It was awesome. It was amazing. They should have given me a 5. It was fantastic. I was full of myself. Then I calmed down. I thought to myself, I deserve that. I deserve that one. My stuff is terrible. So you know what I did after that point? I proved myself, proved myself wrong. I proved them wrong, and I proved myself wrong. I got better. And I forced myself to get better. Every new piece was about a new challenge. Every new piece was about what can I do better? What can I do better? What can I do better? And in doing so, I sort of created a Oh, I don't know how to say it exactly, a, a regiment, a, a discipline in myself that I didn't have before. So everything up to that point was, I want to get in this class, and I got in this class, and then I didn't know what to do. I reached my goal, and I didn't know what to do. So I was in, and I kind of, my best, I challenged myself a little, but apparently it wasn't enough. And when I recognized that in myself, that whatever I was doing wasn't enough, I knew it was time to get better. So, long story short, you will find a drive. You will have to find something that is going to make you get better. For me, it was essentially negative reinforcement. <laughs> it's kind of been that way my entire life. It's When I see the consequences, when I see the, the nah, bad, nasty stuff, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to do better than this. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to show them how wrong they are. <laughs> Not that they're ever going to know, but, you know. <laughs> so I was like, I can do much better than this, and I'm going to. And so I did. <laughs> and that's more or less where I've kind of led myself today. But and maybe you haven't had one of those moments yet. Maybe you haven't found something to motivate you or to really kind of kick your butt. Uh, in, in in some sort of way. Uh, maybe you have to get over yourself. Maybe you think you're amazing and you're not. Maybe you have more flaws than you think you do. Uh, I do want to point you guys over to uh, an inspiration of mine and uh, as well as uh, a great page to check out. Most of you guys know <laughs> who watch my channel know by now I'm a big fan of Chris Oatley and his podcast and his website and everything like that. He had an article uh, up on his site I think about a month or two ago. Uh, something like 21 butt-kicking questions to ask yourself. And it goes right along with what everything I've been talking about today. Uh, along the lines of what do you need to ask yourself to really improve and to really get better? Uh, maybe, maybe you're in your own way and you don't know it. Uh, you can find his questions and, and things like that over on his website. It's chrisoatley.com slash butt, B-U-T-T. Um, so, you know, a great resource to check out. Dives into kind of what I'm saying a little bit further. Ask yourself some of these questions that maybe you are in your own way. Maybe you need to get out of your own way uh, for a change. So that is about all I have to say today. Uh, let's check back over in the comments one more time for anything that you guys have to say. If, again, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to throw those in the comments, whether it be live or you know down the road if you're watching this uh, after the recording is rendered and goes up on YouTube. Feel free to ask me any questions you have about traditional arts media or anything I've been saying here in the live show. 
So, have a look back. And things are pretty quiet still, <laughs> but that's quite all right. Um, Well, that is about all the advice I have to offer this evening, or today, or whatever. I know it's a little bit uh, off. It's not really um, my normal time. I'm normally uh, broadcasting about 7.30. I just kind of wanted to do this live show in the uh, early afternoon. I know some of my some of the uh, members of the art community are over in Europe and can't really watch that late. That late so I tried to bump things back a little bit, but... <laughs> Uh, did what I can here today. Hopefully I can do another live show again once I have a topic and uh, everything like that. Probably in the evening, maybe next week, I'm not really sure. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks everyone for watching. And um, <laughs> Yep, lost my train of thought. I need, some, I need a drink of water. <coughs> So if you were new to the live shows, or any of my live shows or anything like that, and want to find about more about me and my work, you can check the channel out here on YouTube, DMC Films, Cinderblock Studios, or YouTube.com slash user slash Davos Moon, D-A-V-O-S-M-O-O-N, or on my website, cinderblockstudios.com, where you can find all sorts of great resources for artists, uh, interesting articles and things on my blog, as well as my shop page, which links you out uh, currently there's a few different places. I have an Etsy shop that sits pretty emptily. Uh, just recently started selling t-shirts and prints over on Zazzle. That's Z-A-Z-L-E dot com slash Cinderblock Studios. You can buy official Cinderblock Studios t-shirts and prints of my paintings there. And as always, for more tips, tutorials, and other art videos, subscribe to this channel. And this has been, see you guys next time. I can find the stop button.